All right. Well, I want to uh, welcome everybody and thank you for being here. Uh, good afternoon or morning uh, if you're joining us from the West Coast. And welcome to the eighth event in our Outcomes Estimation Tools training webinar series. This time we're featuring the Retrospective Soil Health Economic Calculator or RSHEC tool. So thank you for being here today. I'm Aisha Tap Ross, Water and Soil Health Scientist for American Farmland Trust, and I'm joined by my colleague, Research Scientist, Jen Tillman. For those of you who don't know, American Farmland Trust is a national nonprofit founded in 1980. Our mission is to save the land that sustains us by protecting farmland, promoting sound farming practices, and keeping farmers on the land and preparing the next generation of farmers. For today's webinar, um, after a few reminders and a quick poll to see who's in the room, we'll hear from our very own Ellen Yateman, who will present on the Retrospective Soil Health Economics tool, Calculator Tool. Um, Ellen will first lead us in a presentation and then a demonstration of the tool. We have reserved the last 20 minutes of the webinar for Q&A. And we wanna thank our uh, funders, the EPA Office of Water, and the Walton Family Foundation and the Mosaic Foundation for making this webinar series possible. Um, now for some quick housekeeping reminders. So we are using the Zoom webinar platform for this series. Uh, so that means as attendees, you will have uh, your camera and microphones turned off during this event. You can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen at any time to ask questions and the speakers will answer the questions during the last 20 minutes of the event. You can use your name or be anonymous when asking questions or making comments. You can also vote up questions if you want them to be prioritized. If you're having any technical difficulties, you can direct message me or Jen and we will try to help you out. And then following each webinar, you'll receive an email within three to four days. It's typically the following Monday that will provide the recording and the slides for the presentations, as well as information about the next month's speaker. And by the following Monday, uh, we will post the recordings to the webinar registration page, which we absolutely welcome you to share with colleagues and friends that may be interested in viewing. Um, so in a moment, um, I will be sharing a link to an eight question anonymous evaluation survey that took, I'm sorry, that should take about two minutes to complete. Uh, the survey will pop up when you leave, but you can also click on it now so it opens in a new tab in your browser. We ask that you please complete the survey right after the event ends. Um, our presenters and the AFT, AFT team rely on these surveys to help inform our next month's speaker and any changes we might need to make to the webinar series. So given the low uh, survey participation rate in the past, we're now offering an incentive, um, which we started two months ago. Everyone who fills out a survey today before 6 p.m. Eastern will be entered to win a $25 Visa gift card. The winner will be notified via email tomorrow morning. And we appreciate your participation and wish you luck in the drawing. Uh, so let's see who is in the room for this event. We have uh, three quick poll questions that you will see come across your screen. Uh, so the first one, Jen, you want to share that? Um, the first one is which uh, one sector best reflects your occupation? Uh, so we have government agency, non-government organization, uh, academic institution, and corporation or env environmental markets firm or other. Uh, the second is um, if there are only four types of audience members, which one best describes you? Are you the developer of outcomes estimation tools, methods, or models? A current user of outcomes estimation tools, methods, or models? Potential future user? Or a person interested in learning about outcomes estimation tools and issues? And then finally, what is your experience level with the RSHEC tool? So uh, have you never heard of it? Have you heard of it but never used it, uh, heard of it and used it, or do you refer to it often? So I'll give you a few minutes um, to fill out uh, this poll and then I will report on the results. All right, so we got a few more left to go. So when we get up to about 90% participation, I'll end the poll. All right. 
So yeah, I'll go ahead and, uh, so it looks like most of you are, um, 70% are with government agencies and 20% are non-government organizations. Um, we've got uh, 45% are potential future users of outcomes estimation tools and 28% are uh, a person interested in learning about outcomes estimation tools. And it looks like most of you have never heard of the RSHEC tool. So I'm very excited that you're here to learn about it. It's a, a really uh, neat tool to utilize. And I, I just shared the results with you. All right. Uh, so on the registration site that Jen is sharing in the chat, uh, you'll see this webinar schedule and links to recordings, including the most recent November 1st, Prioritize, Target, Measure app presentation. Next month on January 10th, the second Wednesday of the month, uh, due to the uh, uh, January holiday, uh, Glenn O'Neill with Michigan State University and Ken Genskow with the University of Wisconsin-Madison will present how to implement the Social Indicator Planning and Evaluation System, uh, SIPES, for your watershed project, including how the Social Indicators Data Management System, SIDMA, can quantify your project's impacts. Uh, so uh, I really encourage you to join that event because uh, it's the one uh, social tool and method that we are presenting in the webinar series. And now without further ado, here's Ellen Yateman with the Retrospective Soil Health Economics Calculator. Thank you so much, Aisha. Let me share my screen. And thank you all for being here. All right. So again, thank you to Aisha, Jen, and Michelle for putting on these much needed series of webinars so the public has the opportunity to hear directly from all these amazing tool developers. I've attended some of the um, presentations in the past and excited and honored to be included. So like what, what, what Aisha mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about American Farmland Trust Water Initiatives Retrospective Soil Health Economic Calculator Tool which quantifies soil health successful farmers experience costs and benefits of adopting select soil health practices on select crops. So briefly, um, I'm Ellen Neatman. I'm an ag economist and I'm the water research manager here at American Farmland Trust. And I've been with AFT officially three years since last week. So that's exciting. I live in Drake, Idaho, which we lovingly, lovingly call Idaho. It's on the border with Wyoming. I in 2020, I received my master's in agricultural and applied economics from the University of Wyoming. And in terms of skill set, what I mostly work on, um, as you'll find out, I work primarily um, on field level ag production, economic analysis, developing decision support tools, and producing case studies and writing. Um, both scientific and for the public. Other AFT projects that I work on is uh, develop, I've developed an almond advanced irrigation cost calculator, and we're currently working on an advanced irrigator case studies using that tool. Um, and I work on our various on farm demonstration trials, um, uh, do water quality outcomes estimation, and many other projects. Um, and for fun, I love spending time outdoors, as pictured here. Um, where I backcountry ski and climb in the lovely Teton area. So I'm today I'm gonna give a brief overview of the retrospective soil health economic calculator tool, which here on out, I'm just gonna refer to as the RSHEC tool because it is a mouthful. And the first page of the um, Excel-based 12 tab tool is um, pictured here on the screen. Then I will get a project background, go through the methods and resources, um, and then do a live demonstration where I'll show you the Excel tool, enter data using Peekaboo Livestock of Idaho's um, data. And then we'll go over the strengths and limitations and upcoming changes. So the purpose of the RSHIP tool 
is to interview farmers that have already adopted soil health practices to quantify their experience changes in costs and benefits in the seed field after adopting soil practices for at least four years. A partial budget analysis table is the output of the tool that we use in our two page, easy to read and compelling, or we think they're compelling, soil health economic case study. But you can use the RSHEC tool in whatever way is useful, most useful for you. So this table will look familiar to some of you. Uh, the webinar organizers asked each presenter to include this overview table to describe their tool. So the first feature is what are the scale and level of specificity? So the scale is farm level pertaining to a specific set of fields making up the study area. And the level of specificity is a little nuanced. Um, it's not quite specific technically because the RSHA tool does not consider weather or soil data for that farm. And we use national average machinery, labor, fertilizer, and crop prices. However, we are site specific in terms of the management history of the study area. It's very specific to that farmer's field operations. The outcomes are a partial budget analysis table that quantifies changes due to switching from a conventional management system to a soil health management system. And we break out these changes in dollar per acre by specific categories. We look at changes in machinery type use, volume of pesticide and fertilizer, cover crop cost, soil erosion, um, changes in soil erosion and putting a value on that, changes, potential changes in cash crop yield, learning costs of these implementing these new practices, and other farmer provided estimates and observed changes, costs, and benefits that we can quantify for them. And in the end, you get a total change in net income as dollar per acre, dollar per year, and percent return on investment. So we actually have two versions of the RSHEC tool. We have a row crop and an almond version. Today, I'll primarily focus on the row crop version. And this version includes, um, you can analyze these conservation practices, reduce tillage, no-till, nutrient management, cover crops, and conservation crop rotation. And then for the almond tool, it's a different set of practices, not surprisingly. You could look at chain adoption of cover crops or a perennial conservation cover, um, changing nutrient management, and adding soil amendments such as mulch um, or compost. So what are the land uses and production systems? It's for the tools for cropland, on row crop, um, specifically barley, corn, grain sorghum, hay, soybeans, oats, and or wheat are the crops that it currently works for. Um, or you can use the almond archic tool. And for both tools, you can look at organic or non-organic production. In terms of the geographic location, it works best for the continental US, um, especially in Midwestern states and California where the almonds are grown. Um, it works best for Midwestern states because as you'll see, the, um, the tool uses the University of Illinois, Iowa State, and Iowa State University of Michigan at cost. So how much time, data, and skills are needed to generate um, a partial budget analysis with this tool? So Number one, first step, you have to perform extensive before versus after interview with the selected farmer to collect that study area specific field operations data to complete the RSHA questionnaire, so the associated data collection form. And we tell farmers this could take up to 10 hours um, of their time. And that's, uh, you know, a conservative estimate, or not conservative, it's, um, Hopefully it doesn't take that long, but this does include um, not just video calls um, or in-person interviews, but the time that the farmer could be spending looking through their records or um, picking up doing short phone calls or emails or texts. So uh, we actually pay our farmers $1,000 and estimate that up to 10 hours time, which comes out to be about $100 per hour for their time to participate in these interviews and feature in the case study. Um, number two, then you enter the data into the Excel-based RSEC tool to build that before and after management scenarios. 
And finally, you have to spend time finalizing the partial budget analysis table in the tool, which requires manually deleting or use for those, which I will show later on. In terms of skills needed, familiarity with Excel does help. Um, I think ideally intermediate skill level, honestly, but you can get away with not having any skill in Excel as we provide lots of guidance. And most importantly, familiarity with field operations to build those management scenarios. So that's the overview of the tool. Now I want to give you a little project background. Um, you know, why did we develop this tool to estimate soil health? So it all began in 2018 when Michelle Perez, Water Initiative Director here, um, received a three year USDA conservation grant and now we are currently funded under a NRCS cooperative agreement for this work. And the problem posed is, you know, scientific evidence exists that soil health practices improve soil health, reduce runoff, sequester carbon, but there's not enough publicly available information out there about the economic benefits associated with better soil health. And the ag community voice that they want to know the bottom. On the left here, I am just showing a figure of cover crop adoption as a share of harvested acreage by county in 2017. And most of the counties are in that gray yellow color, which shows cover crops um, on zero to 10% of harvested cropland. So still, you know, as we all know, still some low adoption rates for some of these practices, most of the practices. So the solution posed is we here at AFT develop a tool to quantify the economic outcomes of adopting soil health practices and packaging these results in these two page case studies. And we wanna empower fellow conservationists such as y'all selves to produce their own case studies, your own case studies, featuring local soil health successful producers. And the chip theory of change is the more local evidence there is, the faster we get more farmers to say yes on more acres. So initially the RSHEC tool was developed with by Michelle and Flo Swartz, who Michelle hired um, as she was a retired NRCS economist from New York. Some of y'all might know her, she's great. And Flo and Michelle designed the, you know, first version of the almond and RSHEC tools. Um, and based it really on cover crop tool by Lauren Cartwright and Brian Kerwin. And Brian our series, series earlier. And oh, my internet connection is unstable. I'm guessing everyone can still hear me. You broke up just for a minute, so maybe repeat okay. the last sentence. And if you still have that, maybe try turning off your video. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, the RSHEC tool was, development of RSHEC tool is primarily based on um, NRCS's cover crop tool by Lauren Cartwright and Brian Kerwin. And Brian Kerwin actually presented on this tool earlier in this webinar series which was a great presentation. I encourage you to go to the series page and watch that um, presentation by Brian. And so Flo just took that tool one step further by integrating a similar analysis to a cover crop tool to also cover reduced and no-till nutrient management and conservation rotation. And then in 2020, Michelle and Flo published the RSHEC tool for public use, along with the associated questionnaire, which is data collection form and other guidance materials, which we lovingly call the Soil Health Case Study Toolkit. And then at the end of 2020, early 2021, myself and Ben Marzinski were hired as AFT's first full-time ag economist. And now our team has grown to include two more ag economists, so we're a total of four now, and two full-time case study authors, including um, Jen here with us today. Mm -hmm. Since 2020, we've produced 18 case studies. 15 of these are row crop, and three are all mixed production systems. And we have nine in process. Um, they're all row crop study case studies, and they're from new states that we've never produced case studies in before, including um, my home state of Idaho, 
Maryland, Virginia, Wisconsin, and Kentucky. And we hope to produce these new case studies by summer of next year. And what's really cool is NRCS programs these case studies after they go through external review with NRCS economists and soil health scientists. And our um, NRCS lead is Brian Kerman. So here is just all these 18 case studies showing them off. And we're grateful to each of the farmers for lending us their time, telling us their stories and sharing their data with us. Um, we generated these resources as outreach resources for conservation professionals such as yourself. So shameless plug here, we're hoping that um, conservation professionals in each of these seven states and more states coming will disseminate these case studies at field days, over email and newsletters, in-person visits, webinars, et cetera. And we'd love to collaborate if you want to feature a soil successful farmer in your state and just shoot me an email. So I'd be remiss to not mention that in addition to the AFT case study team, we're grateful to the many external reviewers who made our case study stronger. And um, each case study undergoes a review of the questionnaire, the calculator tool, and the case study write-up by at least one NRCS economist and one soil health specialist. And I actually saw on the attendees list that Dana um, Petrusiak from Maryland She's on the call. Thank you, Dana, for being a reviewer of our upcoming Maryland case study. Um, and on the right side of this list, the bottom two bullets, you'll see NTT, which is Nutrient Tracking Tool, and Comet Farm um, reviewers. And we're super grateful to that those teams at USDA and Colorado State University for reviewing um, our water quality and climate analyses that we try and include in all of our case studies as well using their tools that um, both of these tools are featured in this webinar series as well. So the um, webinar organizers asked every presenter to mention who uses our tools, and in, in our case, also our toolkit. Um, we've partnered with the Almond Board of California and the Oklahoma Conservation and Commission to co-produce case studies in their respective states. Um, and then we've also partnered with on the ground organizations such as the Nature Conservancy of Idaho and Pennsylvania No-Till Alliance, and they co-branded um, our Idaho and Pennsylvania, one of our Idaho and one of our Pennsylvania case studies. You can also do something like the Environmental Defense Fund. They modified the Arctic tool to work for additional crops, such as peanuts and cotton, and used that modified version to produce three so we'll have economic case studies pictured here and their financial impact of climate resilient agriculture in North Carolina publication. And just last month in November, we conducted a survey of downloaders of our soil health case study toolkit. We had 91 respondents and 58 said that they used the toolkit in some way. And um, pictured here on the right, you know, most people were interested in the row crop RSHEC tool and the case study production methods. So now I'm just gonna run through um, the methods to use the tool, find the tool, use the tool, and the resources, and then I'll actually show, demonstrate the, um, pull up the tool. So the steps to producing a partial budget analysis table using the RSHIP tool. I can take a sip of water. <laughs> So step one, you download and then digest the toolkit. And Jen has the link to the website pictured on the left here. And this is where you find the tool and go to download the tool. And you use, I've circled here in the resources um, sidebar. You're yeah, breaking up just a little bit, there. Ellen. Maybe try turning off your camera and seeing if um, that helps. That's where then you get. Thank you. Yeah, you will do that. Sorry, everyone. It's just intermittent, but nice to hear you clearly. Okay. Yeah, especially because we're recording this. Let me get to the view.
Oh, here, I can do it for you if your screen is kind of covered. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, I think I did it. Okay, perfect. All right, everyone. So um, once you click this button, gain access to the toolkit, and Jen will put a link to this website in the chat. Um, you'll get kicked to this page website on the right for downloading the Soul Health Case Study Toolkit, and it describes everything in the toolkit. And then at the bottom, you have this um, form that you briefly fill out. And then you get access to our private, um, well, it's a public folder in our OneDrive online system. And there are five folders in the toolkit. And you'll download these from our online folder to a hardware copies to your computer. Folder one is training materials. This includes links to videos that we've recorded showing folks how to use the RSHEC tool. Um, folder two is methods to identifying your farmer. This is where we include what we call the pre-interview form. Um, folder three is the most important folder. This is economic methods where you find the low problem online RSHEC tool, as well as the associated questionnaires. Folder four, we have an environmental methods folder where we um, give guidance on how we use the nutrient tracking tool and the Comet Farm tool. Um, if you're interested in that, um, make sure you get to Comet and NTT's own resources. And then finally, folder five is methods for writing and producing a case study if you want to go that route, and we provide a case study writing template. So after you've gotten, you found the tool in the toolkit, step two is to identify a farmer that follow, that meets the, the specific criteria for this analysis. So it's already adopted those specific practices four to 15 years ago. Um, given this before versus after approach, farmers initiating practices more than 15 years ago are not ideal because as you can imagine, getting records on their field operations and their inputs from more than 15 years ago gets difficult. And they have to have that data to share, both their historical field operations and inputs under conventional management, and of course their current field operations under soil health management system. Um, step three is use that pre-interview form um, to pre-interview, we call it pre-interview, the farmer to ensure they qualify um, for this analysis. I pictured the form on the right, the first two pages. It's in total four pages. And then once you've selected your farmer, interview the farmer using our root cropper only Marshak questionnaire. And this is a about 21 page document, but you don't use the entire, you only use the sections that apply to your farmer. Um, of course, if they've adopted all four practices, then you will use the entire questionnaire. So next step is you input the data into the RSHEC tool. Um, I have a screenshot here of one of the, the practice tabs in the tool. And then we strongly encourage having your results reviewed by an ag economist, and then following up with the farmer as needed as we result for their approval, of course, especially if you're publishing it to the public. And then finalize that PBA table. And here's a close up of what the PBA table is and looks like in the tool. So we present increases in net income on the left and decreases in net income on the right. And then we further divide these um, two sides into four parts. So on the left, we capture increases, see if I can use my pointer, increase in income. And this captures any changes positive changes in yield as a result of practice adoption, and then decreases in costs, so savings in primarily inputs. Um, on the right, we capture a decrease in income, which would be a decrease in yield, and then increases in cost as well. And the values we're looking at now are pulled from our uh, Larry Thorndike's case study, where he grows corn and soybeans and has adopted um, reduced tillage, nutrient management, and cover crops. And this is available, a case study that's been published and is available online. And we take the increases in net income and decreases in net income 
to calculate this annual change in total net income per year, as well as per acre, and that percent return on investment. So in Larry Thorndike's case, we estimate that since adopting practices, and after that four years of trial and error, on average, compared to his conventional um, historical management, for every $1 he's spent on adopting these new practices, he's gotten back a dollar and 31 cents. So that's what we're estimating. So finally, um, you do have the option to use our case study writing template pictured on the left here um, to write a case study presenting partial budget analysis table as we do pictured on the right. And now I'm going to pull up the tool. All right, so this is the Excel based Archive tool. And right now I'm on the README tab. And then the following six tabs are the actual data input tabs by practice. And then the yellow, two yellow tabs are the results tabs. One is um, static, we use it as, I encourage you not to mess with that one. And then we have an editable version where you can make your own changes that need in. And then these last four tabs are the data used throughout the tool. So the README tab is great. Definitely read through this. Um, gives an overview of the purpose of the tool, some advice. Um, we have the NRCF practice codes for the practices the tool can analyze. And then just some general information. Number one, this yellow colored cell, this is indicating where the user can enter data. So data entry is allowed in yellow shaded cells, first rule. And then there's some other good general information. And then it, we break down information about each um, tab, which I find really helpful. And then what's really nice is we're really transparent about what data is being used in the Archive tool. So we have um, the various items listed in column B and then in column D, the source for the prices and costs associated with these variables. And you can see the list of prices for, that were used from all these sources in the prices tab. So in the prices tab, for example, now I'm on the labor rate table, you can see the source for the 2021 labor rate that the tool uses. Um, if I scroll up, you can see the used prices received index in some cases. We have the uh, row crop prices used, um, both non-organic and organic, calculated value of reduced nutrient loss to soil erosion, reduction, the pounds per ton of soil used, assumed, and the prices used, and then the sources for that methodology, and more. So we're really, um, we, we're kind of unique in that way that you can actually go right into what data is being used in the background. What's really important, we've listed out the machinery that the tool, you can select in the tool and the associated price. So we use um, machinery from University of Illinois uh, Farm Deck, and you have the long list of machinery you can choose from, and then some guidance about inserting your own machinery and cost um, at the beginning of more guidance as well as elsewhere. And then also fertilizer application machinery costs and the ability to add your own um, machinery. For example, in blue here, I've added a uh, custom manure application per acre cost um, as an example, and then it shows up in the tool as an option. So that's the background data used by the tool. And now let's, and that was the README tab. So now let's go into our info tab. So this tab, we, I currently have information from Peekaboo Livestock Ranch in Idaho, their, um, their data in the tool. And I'm just going to quickly show off this case study. So uh, this summer we released um, our first ever Idaho case study featuring the Purdy family of Peekaboo livestock. And they've um, 
we focus on their alfalfa hay malt barley rotation, where they have adopted no-till, cover crops, and nutrient management. And this is just a close-up of, and it was co-branded with the Nature Conservancy of Idaho. And then here's the partial budget analysis table we produced using their data. So in the farm info tab, you put in just basic information. And then most importantly, this is where you put the crop rotation information. So here I have the um, crop rotation as two years of barley, um, which comes out to be about 600 acres annually. And then they go into hay for four years, which comes out to be about 1,200 acres annually. And there, they did not do a change in conservation crop rotation. So the current rotation is the same as the benchmark rotation. So the tool, you would enter your crop. Um, so two years barley, four years hay, and then the acres. And now you have successfully, the tool's happy and you successfully entered the crop rotation um, for the before and after scenarios. And then this table is referenced throughout the workbook. Other background information in the farm info tab is, you know, just noting what practices are being analyzed. It's mostly for the user's sake, reference sake. Um, time spent on educational activities. We always ask farmers, you know, how many hours per year do you think you spend on like the learning curve of this new practice? So you can enter hours per year by, by practice implemented or combined practice those estimates. And so in Pat's case, he estimated, the Purdy's case, Pat Purdy estimated 75 hours per year were spent on learning the various new practices. And to this day, they're still constantly learning. And the tool calculates to be almost $2,000 per year um, learning cost. And what the tool's doing is they're, it's pulling that um, labor rate from the prices tab to calculate this dollar per year. Alternatively, if the farmer isn't happy with that default labor rate, and you can actually click this link to reference that. So this takes you right to the labor rate table and you say, okay, it's assuming $26.18 per hour. So the farmer is like, oh, that's too much or too low. I pay myself more or my employees more. Then you can override that default rate here. Um, finally, on the Farm Info tab, we do give you the option to use the farmer's fertilizer or crop prices instead of the default prices from that prices tab. So that's the Farm Info tab. And now let's go into the Tillage tab. So for every tab, we give an About This tab. And then for every data entry table, we give tips on uh, how to use the upcoming data entry table. And every tab includes pretty much the same set of data entry tables. And I will say, I'm going to quickly flash on the screen the questionnaire. So the associated questionnaire, we try to make this match exactly how you enter the data in the tool. So here we have the pre-interview form where you really hone in on the rotation study area. Here's that crop rotation table that should look familiar. Um, you know, overview of the practices that you're gonna analyze. Questions, that's more for the story aspect of the case study. But what I wanna get to is the, um, and then this learning kind of farm info tab stuff that's in the pre-interview form. And then you, um, we have the soil health practices and economic impacts. And um, I just highlighted in yellow to point out the important information. Um, you know, this section is divided between the soil practices and combined practice effects because that's how the r -check tool is set up. And for each practice, we ask the farmer to tell us how the operation worked pre-adoption, benchmark conventional production, and post-adoption current soil health production. And then it dives into by each practice, you'll see the same tables in this questionnaire that are in the tool for, um, for consistency sake. And hopefully to make it easy for 
you to gather the correct data and then easily enter it. So back to the tool. So we have the first tables are where you enter machinery. And for this is, we've, I selected crop one already, so finally. And this is under the, first it asked about what was the benchmark tillage practice. And I've already entered some of their machinery. So they ran a mobile cloud, tandem disk, and then they also, I have a note to myself, they also, they then plant using a conventional grain, grain drill and run a field cultivator. So I select the machinery. So here's the grain drill. They just do one pass and the tool pulls the um, machinery costs for that equipment. And depending on the number of passes, it calculates the total cost per acre. And then they also run a field cultivator. So under the conventional scenario, the tillage and planting machinery cost or overall cost is we estimate $84 per acre. Now, what do they do currently under this current tillage, which is no-till? They just use a, an air seeder is what's most best, uh, best match what they currently do. So they just run an air seeder, one pass, and that's we estimate now is just $19.30 um, per acre cost. So that's a big reduction in cost by going to no time. And then we have a table for hay where we've entered that, um, the machinery they used before and after as well. Um, I've hidden, I'm gonna show you the, I've hidden the rows um, but you can, if there's more than two crops in the rotation, we have additional tables, um, machinery tables for those. But I've just hidden it for ease. And so the tool calculates for this study area with switching completely to no-till. We calculate that the weighted average changing cost of the savings is about $61 per acre with adopting no-till across the 18 across the study area. So the next data entry table is yield impacts due to change in tillage. And this yield impacts table you'll see in the nutrient management tab, the cover crop tab, the com combined practice effects tab, and the conservation and crop rotation is what CCR stands for um, tab. And so if they can associate a yield change with tillage, which in this case, the Purdy's did attribute a yield change to their soil practices, but they put it in the combined practice effects um, tab, not surprisingly. And this is where we ask the farmer, you know, what were your benchmark average yields? And then if they, based on their records, ideally, they can calculate any associated percent yield increase or decrease or a change in average yield of percent per acre. So that's the yield table. And then we ask about um, any changes in primary nutrients used in terms of um, pounds per acre of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And again, we ask this tables in every practice tab. And then we ask for any changes, if we've experienced any change in pesticide use. And since costs in various pesticides vary so much, and there's so many different types, we ask the farmer for their um, cost per acre and what that percent change is, or you can calculate that with them in herbicide, insecticide, and And for every table, the tool calculates the study area per acre change. Then we give you users a chance to put a value on any decreased erosion due to change in tillage or the other practices. So again, this table is you can enter it by practice, so the same table as in on the other tabs. And then finally, we ask for if they've received any annual financial assistance for these practices. But, you know, we note here that any financial assistance payments listed are not included in the partial budget analysis because cost share is temporary and not received by all, but we encourage you to note it um, in the story or in the footnote of the um, 
partial budget analysis of people. And then finally, for every practice tab, we have this kind of catch-all other benefits and cost, where if they, for example, we've had farmers say they spend less time picking rocks with which to no-till, we could quantify that for them as a benefit here. Um, so any like back of envelope calculations that we can do for the farmers experience costs and benefits that aren't captured above, we wanted to give some flexibility here. So that's an overview of the table. So to summarize, the categories that we're looking at in this tool are change in machinery, change in yield, change in nutrients, change in pesticides, change in erosion, and then the catch up over. Um, so I'm just gonna do a couple more data entry examples. So the nutrient management tab, I'll just scroll through. Again, you get this about information and tips. And this should look really familiar. We've entered the change in nutrient management machinery for barley and for hay, and then give an option for capturing yield impacts. But what I wanted to show you was the impact of change in nutrient management activities on primary nutrients used. So the purdies went from synthetic fertilizer on, on applied to their hay, their alfalfa hay, to now being 100% manure compost. And so I've captured the decrease here since they're no longer applying synthetic um, fertilizer. But now in the, I want to add in how many tons per acre of manure compost they're applying now. So they're now applying five tons per acre. And then, but the tool needs the provided dollar per ton which is about $20. And so then we've captured the overall change in um, primary nutrient cost comes to an increase in $44 per acre um, cost to apply now manure compost instead of synthetic fertilizers. So it's more expensive. Um, and again, these are the similar tables. And then finally, I just want to show you some more things. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do cover crop entry and then yield change and the combined practice effects, and then briefly show you the data in the conservation crop rotation tab. And then I'll just show you the results. And that will be the demo. So the, the cover crop tab looks a little different. Um, and instead of the machinery tables, like in the other two tabs, we um, made it a little more flexible for the user. So in this case, the purdies are planting a cover crop before barley. So I select barley, and this is just for the user's sake. We're doing a dry forage mix across just 300 acres. And the farmer provides their cover crop seed cost. And then together, we estimated the establishment cost using the air seeder cost, and then we did they double drilled, or they did two passes. So that's how we came up with that price. And then the termination cost is $0 for them because they graze and um, allow the cover crop to winter kill. Um, and since they already grazed their volunteer barley, it's not an additional cost. So that's why that's zero. And again, yield impacts option to put in there or changes in primary nutrients or changes in pesticides or changes in erosion, <laughs> annual financial assistance payments, other, and then what's quite different is we have this awesome grazing and haying of cover crop section. And this is if they are newly implemented grazing to their field, you can capture their um, grazing covered infrastructure annual cost here. Um, you can then either for a cow-calf operation, a dairy operation, or a stocker operation, we can estimate the um, total grazing benefit that way. In this case, the purdies knew the, they in the past, they um, they had sold part of their cover, or like had knew the value of their cover crop through the local market. So we ended up using a price from their um, local market value that Pat's received in the past. And, and he knew he could estimate the um, forage yield of that core 
additional forage yield of that cover crop. So here in the hanging or grazing cover crops table, this is where we capture that benefit. We know 300 acres of cover crops, all the acres are grazed, and the Purdy's estimate an additional third ton per acre yield that the, their cattle benefits from in addition to that volunteer barley. And so the total estimates $74 per acre income from grazing that cover. So that's a tool functionality of the tool. And then um, in this case, we decided to put the yield impacts due to soil practices on the combined practice effects tab. So here they actually attribute some of their increase in yield on barley and alfalfa to their three new soil practices. So for barley and for hay, we select the crops. Their benchmark average yield on conventional management, the parties calculated to be 105 bushels per acre of barley and four tons per acre of hay. And they reported to us that a change in average yield um, in units per acre. So they attributed a five bushel per acre increase in barley yield and a um, half, half a ton increase in hay. And so the tool then gives a study area per acre change um, weighted average dollar per acre um, at $71 per acre increase in income. And again, those same tables are available on this combined practice effects tab. And this is usually where we enter changes and try to emphasize erosion because it's hard to parse those changes if there's multiple practices implemented. And then if there's changes to adopting conservation crop rotation, we have lots of guidance about how to um, consider that in conjunction with the other practices. And the tool, if there was a change in crop rotation, the tool will automatically update the change in net income as we use the net income values by crop from the Economic Research Service. So we just have calculated the um, change in net income uh, or the net income by crop is pulled from there. So that's the data entry tabs. And then this is the partial budget analysis tab. So your results are now pulled into this super long, ugly partial budget analysis table. And that's because every row corresponds with all the possible changes that the tool can calculate. So in this case, um, we see an increase in income. The tools captured that income from grazing cover um, here, as well as the yield impacts here, because they're positive. If they were negative, they would have been captured on this side. And then scroll down further, um, the decrease in cost due to change in tillage is captured here. Uh, but if, again, if it was um, an increase in cost, it would show up on this side. And in columns A and Okay. We've noted the associated NRCS practice code with each row, so you can easily um, know what, what these rows correspond, what changes they correspond with, or what practice changes they correspond with. Um, the cover crop cost has been captured on as an increase in cost um, on the right, and all the other changes are captured. And then you get this total um, annual change. And we ask, we warn users, and usually this workbook's protected, but I don't protect it for the demonstration. We, um, we note this table should not be edited here, but on the subsequent tab called Editable PDA Table, so that you can save these results, and this will be auto-updated if you make any changes to your data entry tabs. But for now, if you want to come up with this pretty table, you delete all those rows that don't aren't being used, and I've modified it to become this pretty PPA table. So that is the tool, and now I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint.
So what are the strengths and limitations of this tool? This is a slide that the webinar organizers ask every presenter in the series to include, which I love. Um, so I just want to start with the limitations so we can end on a positive. It is data intensive, as you as you can tell. So it requires significant interview time with the farmers to obtain the production and management data for their conventional before versus after soil health adoption management scenarios. And we're trying to gather averages for those scenarios. It can be really difficult, and we do rely in some cases heavily on the farmer's data. Um, it's limited to a farm level analysis and those specific crops and works best for row crop and almond dominated production states. And currently the RSHEC tool doesn't work well for analyzing a conservation crop rotation alongside other practices. I didn't want to go into that today because it's pretty technical, but we are, um, we are aware that uh, it could be improved. In terms of strengths, uh, you can analyze one or multiple soil health practices, and you can analyze that grazing or haying of cover crops. Um, it's adaptable to farmer-specific rotation and field operations. The default data used in the tool can be updated or changed by the user in the workbook. It's an Excel-based tool that's easy to download and work in, we think, um, and there's no internet required once downloaded to your computer. And then the results are presented in that pre-populated partial budget analysis table that we think is pretty easy to interpret and um, can be easily edited and saved as an independent table of results. So I just wanted to announce what's upcoming. So in spring 2024, we are going to re-release an um, updated version of our shop tool. And this is going to include improving the conservation crop rotation calculations to have more accurate estimates of resulting the resulting change in per acre net income with introducing new crops to a rotation alongside the adoption of other soil health practices. We want to streamline the data collection and input process, reducing the number of replicated tables. Um, we're playing with the idea of instead of replicating all those tables, just having those tables all in one tab. Um, and also we're gonna update prices and move to using a rolling five-year average up to 2023 um, instead of year-specific values. And finally, we wanna add regionally specific machinery cost options so the user can choose to use other data besides Illinois data. And um, I, want to uh, brag a little about my team and my teammates. So we have a great team that's working on uh, publishing a predictive version of this tool, which is super exciting, um, where you can use uh, the tool with farmers who have not yet adopted some of these practices and they're more curious about, so curious or maybe just starting to play and you can predict the short and long-term changes and cost and benefits with adoption of one or more of these practices for your farm. That's really exciting. We're thinking version one of the predictive check tool will be released in the fall of next year. And we're beginning development of a retrospective grazing economic tool, also very exciting. And we have, like I mentioned, tons of new case studies always coming. So here's the greater team. Um, we are, this is, I believe, yeah, I think almost all of the water initiative and climate and soil health initiative team members work on some aspect of the retrospective um, or predictive um, soil health economic calculator tools. On the right um, with my me, Leah Raz, Jen Tillman, Robert Ellis, and Kent, we call ourselves the case study team. We're really focused on the RSHEC tool and producing case studies. And then on the left, Ben Wierzynski, Shelley Maples, Meng Lee, Aisha Tapras, Bonnie McGill, and Layla Pintel work primarily on um, this predictive check tool version. So thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to check out the Soil Health Case Study Toolkit to use the RSHEC tool 
and or develop case studies. Um, Jen, Jen, would you mind putting a link to that website to gain access to the toolkit um, pictured here on the left in the chat? And also Jen's gonna put in the chat a link to our, we AFT has a like internal publications warehouse, we call it the Farmland Information Center. And that's where our case studies are housed. Um, you can also just keyword search in Google, AFT Toolkit or AFT Archive Tool, AFT Soil Health Case Studies, and you can find these websites. So thank you so much for listening and I'm excited to hear any questions. It looks like we do have um, one question. Um, quick and easy question. Could you please show again the one slide that covers step two through four? Uh, apparently there was a sneezing fit uh, when that was on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, uh, please feel free to ask uh, questions um, to Ellen uh, about how you uh, might be able to utilize this tool for your own work uh, or future work. All right. Um, Uh, also, if you have a question that you want to um, uh, be unmuted for, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you uh, to actually ask your question as well. We, we, we do have that feature now, which is nice. Um, I have a quick question. Great. So in the tool, um, you had um, the the uh, different crops, you had a section that was hidden. Um, yeah. Is that hidden in the tool or did you just hide that uh, during the presentation? Great question. So when you download the tool, none of the rows are hidden. Um, I just hid it for the presentation. Great. Uh, I was also going to ask you about um, the the cost because it seemed like the cost went up to 2021 only, but then you answered it at the end by saying that the mm. updating costs are coming um, in the spring, correct? Yeah, exactly. And I have the prices tab up here. As you can tell, it's definitely hard to keep up with updating the tool for annual year price releases. And so we're trying to move away from that, especially because the past few years, fertilizer prices have been extremely volatile. We're trying to move away from, um, and crop prices kind of inherently can be volatile. So we're trying to move away from updating it to yearly, or we actually do it every other year, um, and just starting to use that five-year rolling average instead. So I'm really excited about moving towards that strategy. Well, that's nice. That would be really helpful. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I know that you probably discussed this. Um, for some reason, I don't remember it, but um, it you probably did. But if somebody on the uh, webinar today is interested in working with you to create a case study, how should they go about doing that? Yeah, I think emailing me directly would be the great first step. Um, we do have a online survey that we have, once you've identified that potential farmer, um, we do have an online survey to get some basic information from the farmer, but um, I think it's best for now to just email me and we can discuss the options. Um, and I just pulled up the slide where I put my email. Um, so you can just email me directly. Great. Great. Um, we do have another question. Um, somebody says, I don't see where to download the tool. Do they have to fill out a form to get to it? Yeah. Um, so the link that Jen put in the chat should take you to this left website. So the farmland.org slash soil health case studies methods. And then we have, um, you'll find a button that says gain access to toolkit. 
So that's how I tell people to get to it. Um, also, it's, uh, once you gain access to the toolkit, you will have to scroll to the bottom of that page and enter some basic information to get to that online folder system where you download those five folders. And I can, I can pull up that slide. So there are multiple steps, which that's also part of our idea for the re-release is figure out a system where you just press a button and it automatically downloads to your computer instead of having to manually do that. But that's how it is currently. So let me pull that up. So yeah, once you go to that um, website that Jen's put in the uh, chat, you click gain access to toolkit, then you get kicked to this download the Soil Health Case Study Toolkit page, scroll down to the bottom, fill out this form, and then you get sent to the toolkit, which is an online folder system. And you can download each of these folders. If you just want the tool, you can open, find the tool in the economic methods folder, and you'll see row crop r tool and just download the tool. Um, but I encourage you, you might as well just download all the folders. All right. Uh, so Katie has, is asking, are there any plans to update the tool so it can be used to assess other permanent crops aside from almonds? We'd love to. Um, I think the low the low hanging fruit is to add in other um, tree nut crops because they're managed so similarly, such as walnuts. So most likely that would be the first thing we add. Um, but we don't really have a timeline set for that. Um, but there's definitely talks and we desire. It's just finding the time. Um, and honestly, the almond uh, Arshik tool as is, if a user really wanted to use it for walnuts or pistachio, pistachios, it'd be quite easy to just add in those crops in that back end of the tool um, to make it work for those. It's more complicated if you want to add in like fruit systems or vineyards. Um, but definitely something we want to do is just finding the time. Um, but the first the first thing we'll, we will do when we do have the time is to make it work for other tree nut crops. Is there, a, uh, Katie, is there a specific uh, crop that you were uh, wondering about or is it just in general? And if you want to actually talk, uh, you can raise your hand and I'll uh, <laughs> unmute you. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, I don't have any other questions. Um, is there anybody else who has any other questions about um, the use of the tool or how to get to the tool or anything like that? Great. Um, well, Ellen, if you want to stop sharing your screen, I'll go ahead and share mine. Oh. All right. There we go. Okay, well, um, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Um, so thank you everyone for participating in today's webinar. Uh, here are some next steps in our collective outcomes quantification <laughs> journey. So first, we look forward to you joining us uh, at some or all of the next set of tools training webinars that will be held the first Wednesday of every month. Um, uh, except this, except in January, except the next month, which will be held the second Wednesday due to the neighboring holiday. If you can't make it to one or more of the webinars, but you want to view the session, the recording should be available by the following Monday. And you will receive an email about that um, on that Monday. Uh, second, at the end of the webinar, please share your feedback with us by answering a quick eight question survey 
Uh, Jen shared the link at the beginning of the session, and it will also appear as a new tab in your internet browser when the webinar ends. Please take a couple of minutes to share your feedback so we can uh, keep improving these events. And don't forget that um, you will be entered into a drawing for a gift card just for filling out the survey. So we thank you in advance for your participation and good luck. Um, also, Michelle and I um, are offering free coaching services to six farm project managers who secure a session with us. These sessions are individually tailored to you in order to help you figure out which tools or methods are right for your project. If you're interested, just email me, Aisha Tap Ross, um, and in the subject line, write coaching request. And finally, if you'd like a free print copy of the guide to be mailed to you, you can place that order online at the report's website, which you can easily find using the key keywords AFT Outcomes Tools. So thank you again for your participation and we look forward to seeing you on January 10th. And if you have any additional questions for Ellen, feel free to email her as well. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a lovely day.